All right. Well, sorry for the late start, but uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for those who are joining us, but uh, also to those that are watching uh, this on our YouTube channel. So for those of you that aren't aware, we are recording this session and it will be post posted shortly afterwards uh, to our Wisconsin FLL YouTube channel. So real quick summary of the weekend. We had three regionals, uh, Brown County, Riverside, Madison, and that means 22 more tickets were punched to the sectionals, which will start the following, uh, well, this upcoming weekend, actually. There is one regional remaining, and that is Franklin. Uh, 26 teams, the, five, the last 26 teams will be participating, eight of which will get their ticket punched to the sectionals. We are have some guest uh, tournament directors here this evening, and I'm going to give them a chance to um, talk about the upcoming events uh, for this coming weekend. And let's see here. Actually... Oh, and we'll also talk briefly about the uh, Franklin also has an Explore Festival. So Jeff Z is here and he'll chat about that one. So actually, I don't have a whole lot of administrative issues to talk about. So Brian, anything from you on the judging side? Nope. No. Jay, anything or do you want to deal with any issues later? We'll save it till the end so these guys can get out if they need to get out. Very actually, good. I will actually mention one thing. Um, just a reminder that this year, um we are going to be watching the fours a lot closer so we uh, all the judges will be discussing those so um don't be surprised if even at regionals you got fours that might not be fours by the time you get to sectional and keep in mind that's been happening the whole season it's not just for you know going forward um correct yeah thank you for clarifying that all right so uh uh, I'll turn the mic over to Josh Hansen, who's the director of the uh, Franklin Regional coming up. Thanks, Greg. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, we have our Franklin Regional coming up here on Sunday, uh, December 10th. Um, something that was pointed out to me in my first email blast. I did not include the location. It is at Franklin High School. Um, I, I will include that address and more detailed parking instructions in my next uh, email that I'm hoping to send tomorrow. Um, yeah, no, it's our third time hosting a tournament, I, I want to say. And it's been a little bit different every single time. Uh, had some excitement last year with a, a nice fire alarm that went off. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're well prepared for that scenario now. Um, but, yeah, uh, like I said in my email, if if I, which I sent out to all the coaches, um, I have a rough draft of the schedule ready to go. Uh, we are getting some updates to team names, which there was a lot, so I don't know what happened with all the, I know you have to update it in first and then the, the Badger bots, Wisconsin FLL spot, and then it comes to us. So uh, have a lot of team updates. So we are, that should all be good to go at the actual schedule, which is important. So the MCs and everybody is calling you by the right name, but if you haven't gotten that back to me yet, please uh, make sure you do. Um, the schedule we're running this year, it is the, the schedule that all the other tournaments are running this all day tournament. So, you kind of have five major events throughout the day. You'll, you'll have your judging session where you'll go into a room for 30 minutes uh, where you'll be judged on your uh, your research project and presentation. Uh, you'll talk about your robot, your missions. Uh, you, you won't actually get to you know show them off like in person to judges, but you can talk through the process and strategy involved. And then you'll also talk about the core values, the teamwork, you know, all the skills that you've developed throughout the year. Um, and then you will also have a practice match on the actual competition tables. Um, so that could be good if you want to do any calibration or just get a, a sense of how, you know, those tables work and operate. A lot of teams, when they practice, they just kind of have their mats spread out on the floor. So it might be a little bit different. Um, and then you have your three uh, robot matches throughout the day um, where you'll be competing with and against another partner on the table. There's some shared missions, as you know about. Um, and yeah. It's going to be a great day. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, right now, we're looking at, like I said, doors opening, you know, 7.45, 8 a.m.-ish, and hoping to be all wrapped up by 5 p.m., uh, closing ceremony starting around 4.30 or so. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. that's kind of the, the basics. I, I know we do have a good number of rookie teams, so I'm excited for that uh, to show off what a great program this is. Yeah. So if there's any questions or anything else that uh, 
the experts on the call would like me to cover, I'd be happy to talk about that right now. I would like to make one modest correction. I seem to be oftentimes the last person to know that a team has changed names. So it seems to be they contact the tournament directors and then somehow I find out later on. But I would encourage all teams that do change their names, do it at firstinspires.org and then I'll get that information from them and everything else will flow from there. But if I don't know, obviously I can't communicate it. Um, but if you want it officially changed so that the rest of the world knows, firstinspires.org is the place to do it. That is true, because if if your team does qualify for your sectional, then you might have to go through this whole process again unless you want to take care of it yourself. So exactly. great point, Greg. <laughs> hey, Josh, only because I ask all of the um, TDs this information. Um, so for teams that are planning on eating um, food there, do you guys have scheduled um, like gluten-free um, options or vegetarian options? Do you know any of the catering schedule yet or no? Uh, it's okay yeah, so if you don't. I just didn't know if you did. No, uh, in terms of specific allergens, uh, okay. not. I can't speak too much to that. Okay. I, I do know that, you know, it's concessions food and we're going to get some like Domino's pizza in. So okay. I'm sure we'll have some cheese pizza options. Um, otherwise, it's like nachos, pretzels, popcorn, okay. candy, soda, drinks. Um, you are free to bring in food. We're not going to, you know, police that too much. But uh, the concession stand is a fundraiser for our high school. Uh, FRC team. So if you'd like to support us that way, uh, we'd be, be very much appreciative. Yeah. And we always encourage the teams to um, get food there because they're almost always going towards the high school teams. Um, I just wanted teams that were coming in that may have specific concerns to make sure they're prepared with food. So if you guys um, assume there are normal concession foods and if you need something beyond that, feel free to bring it in. Yeah. As a Jerry, parent of a food allergic child, I always recommend these things. Either, a lot of the food comes from different places. Some yep. of it, you know, yep. comes from homes and things like that. You just, you want to make sure you're, you've got your own stuff taken care of. So yeah, from yep. a food allergy perspective, you take care of yourself. All right. So hmm. for anybody on the call, are there any questions for Josh about the, the challenge regional uh, tournament? this coming Sunday, because if there aren't, then Jeff, if you wouldn't mind sharing, uh, we're lucky this year that the Franklin Challenge Tournament, the regional is also going to include a Explore Festival. So Jeff, if you wouldn't mind sharing some of the key uh, details. Sure. Um, yeah, from an organizer perspective, I'm not so sure how lucky this really was. Um, <laughs> organizing two events at the same time in the same place, whole nother, whole nother level. Um, but we're looking forward to this. So the FLL um, Explorer Festival is going to be, um, uh, it's not the whole day event, the, the same duration as the um, as a FLL Challenge Festival. Um, but we've got a kind of a good chunk of the middle of the day set aside. So team registration will start at 1130. Um, by the way, I've couple of you have already asked. I apologize for not sending out the information in writing. I'll get that out to the mentors probably late tonight. Um, so you should have that tomorrow um, and we can go from there. Um, so yeah, we're starting at 1130 arrival and registration. That's about a half hour duration. So um, come noon, we'll, we'll do an MC welcome, kind of a little opening ceremony icebreaker kind of event for the teams. I think we have, what do we have? Eight, is it seven or eight teams? Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the exact number. I sent you eight, but I thought you had some in-house teams that were not fully registered. Yeah, Maybe. and I think three of them ended up choosing not to come. So of those, I have, we have nine teams in Franklin. And I think six are there, a couple external ones. So I think we're at eight or nine, something like okay. that. Um, so that's all good. Um, so we're going to have an icebreaker event and opening a little short opening ceremony at noon from about 1230 till roughly 230. We're going to do activities and reviewing sessions. Um, there's going to be all kinds of different STEM activities. We're going to do a rotation, so everybody will have a chance to do a bunch of different tables and different activities. Um, we're also going to have FRC 2506, Sabre Robotics. We'll have a robot there to, to show the kids between that and, and the FLL Challenge kids. Um, I'm assuming the team from – there's an FTC team going to be there. I don't think we're going to set up a whole field, but they should be able to demonstrate their robot as well. Um, 
And then we'll have um, from 2.30 to 3, we'll kind of have the teams cleaning up their areas. And then 3 to 3.30 or maybe a little earlier, we'll do the closing ceremonies. And that's just going to be a kind of a thank you and we'll issue the awards and, and that'll be that. Um, this event is in the, the library at Franklin High School. So um, it's in the same facility, the uh, right, it's literally almost right across the hall from the, um, from the concessions. So food will be available just like it is for the uh, FLL Challenge Tournament. Um, encouraging the kids from the FLL Explorer Festival to take some of their time and walk around the pits and, and see what the, the challenge kids are doing. Um, it's always a great opportunity to see what's next in, in FIRST Robotics, which is also why we have FTC and FRC there to give them kind of a sampling. Um, just a great opportunity to do that. So um, I don't know that I have any, if, if there's any questions, I'll take those. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty straightforward event, I think. Okay. Any questions from uh, the coaches, mentors, and the call? Going once. Yeah, you can always come back later, so I won't do a countdown. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, but in the meantime, then uh, is Jerry. Jerry's on the call, right? So Jerry Christ is a uh, tournament director of the first sectional. It's all yours, Jerry. All right. Thanks. Um, so Oak Creek sectional is Saturday, uh, the ninth. Doors will open for teams at seven thirty. About 7.30, between 7.30 and 7.45. Um, there should be a uh, map going out tonight with detailed instructions on where to park. Um, so to kind of uh, make this easy for everyone to constantly have uh, access, um, I have a, uh, a page on our website that has all of the details for the day that will be going on. Um, it has uh, a list of all the teams that have uh, earned their way in. Uh, a lot of you have gotten, um, I sent out a, uh, a form for you to send in so that you could attach a picture so that uh, we have a picture of your team waiting for them at their pit table so they'll know where to go quickly. Um, pits, will be, pits will be in the main gym. Um and then our competition will be in our auxiliary gym. Um, we will um, uh, we will have a concession stand. That concession menu is also on the website so that you can quickly access that. That website is roundtablerobotics.com or 1792rtr.com. Just go under FLL Outreach, and it should take you right to the FLL sectional page. Um, uh, we will also be uh, linking the score table to that. So at any time, anybody with their phone can access the uh, the current scores. Um, we will have uh, scoring monitors up in the, um, uh, the main gym and the cafeteria where um, the concession stand will be. Uh, we're looking to have, our goal is to have six practice tables we might have eight, but right now I can only promise you six. Um, so we should have uh, plenty of plenty of room on practice fields, just like a um, a regional. You'll have uh, you'll have a practice match on the actual competition field, so you can kind of uh, get your team acclimated to the uh, to the actual field uh, and how the lighting will be in the. Uh, in the main in the uh, competition area um i with 28 teams i'm expecting to hopefully get the judges out for closing ceremonies somewhere between 4 30 and 4 45 um that is the the goal i've given my judge advisors uh <laughs> if we if we get that great um but i would say we're probably going to be wrapped up somewhere uh, in the 5.30-ish time frame, um, depending on the 28 teams. Um, so, yeah, that's, again, our, our our concession stand is sponsored by the Oak Creek High School Robotics Booster Club, and uh, we support um, programs for all ages in the Oak Creek area. 
So please utilize our, um, our concession stand. But again, I understand if you want to bring in food, um, there are a few restaurants that are close. I'm not sure how well behaved your, your teams are. If you can get across the street to noodles and get back in the time that we have allotted for lunch, I wish you the best of luck. Um, but we do have, uh, we do have that. Um, our menu items are walking tacos and mac and cheese. And then we have a whole bunch of snack stuff uh, and things like that. So um, any questions, don't hesitate to, uh, like I said, I sent out a, um, I sent out a form already. I'm going to hit another um, uh, blast is going to go out too. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I should say, I'm a little bit, uh, well, I meant to get out uh, an email to coaches today uh, because some of the teams that are going to Oak Creek just qualified this past weekend. So it is on my agenda. I will get it out tonight, but Jerry might beat me to the uh, communication email. <laughs> At least you'll know why you're getting it now. And one thing we'll clear, um, we'll go into real quick. Um, so there's been a little confusion when we are talking about practice rounds and practice times. So if you guys are watching the video here, or if you have a team that is on the call with us here, um, when you have a scheduled practice time on your schedule, that is the actual competition tables. That's not the practice tables. So we'll also, um, if you guys could kind of reach out to your uh, pit area and make sure that teams are clear that practice times are on the competition table in addition to however you guys are um, distributing practice table slots or, or whatever. So we have people asking about that every tournament. I mean, it's a little confusing with the terminology, but. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear on, on just kind of the evolution of the practice round, it was something that these experienced guys came up with at the beginning of the season. We've had nothing but positive feedback on giving teams an opportunity to be on the competition tables. And as many of you know, the kids are nervous the first time. It gives them a chance to get acclimated uh, without the pressure of, of having to, you know, get their best score. So, so far, all the feedback's been great. Uh, it does make the schedule, you know, a little bit more compressed. There's always an activity right around the corner. Um, so if anybody has a different opinion, feel free to share it. Uh, I'd just like to share so far, it's it's all been positive. So, so far, it seems to be working. Any questions from any of the coaches or other uh, people on the call? Specifically about the, the regional and sectional upcoming and the Explore Festival. All right. Well, if not, obviously they will be able to be reached via email or if you wanted to throw something in the chat in the meantime. Um, Jay, any you want to discuss any refereeing issues? Um, the, well, the only thing we had was just a clarification on um, some of the combinations or a combination. Um, sorry, I wasn't prepared for the question. I apologize. No. <laughs> um, but it's kind of the same way we've been ruling all year. So it's nothing, uh, nothing different. Uh, I believe it just said, and I should have had it in front of me, but, um, if you're combining something with a mission model, they're clarifying that an immediate separation is like a one motion thing. stuff. And I guess we can go into that a little bit further. Um, we do consider, um, every individual connection to a mission model as a separate connection. For instance, I don't think it's a big secret that um, many of the teams are combining audience members and Anna to the podium or pedestal. Um, that's okay the way we are ruling the combinations. We consider each individual connection as a connection. So if you have seven things attached to the pedestal, as long as each one can be separated immediately in one motion, that's fine. So, In the chat, there's a question is what are the logistics of the practice tables, signups, how, how can we sign up for uh, a time? I assume that's for Oak Creek. Well, they can both answer actually. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> if they have an answer, ready. 
<clears throat> there will be a sign up for the practice tables at Oak Creek. Um, we're looking at using a, a screen so everybody will see what time their their schedule is. Uh, I think I'm going to put one of my students, Elijah, in charge of that because he has plenty of time this week uh, to take care of that for me. <laughs> yeah, Frank, Franklin's going to be a little bit more low tech with just uh, some some printouts. Um, but yeah, uh, just would encourage uh, teams that if, if you are taking advantage of the practice tables, remember your gracious professionalism and make sure everybody's getting a fair share at getting their turns. And the G, I guess something that's come up a couple of times in the last week in Slack that might be worth bringing up is the Bluetooth. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> actually Eric had a conversation about it last week with a team questioning, uh, you know, the, um, are we allowed to use Bluetooth in at the tournament? Um, and so here's the deal with Bluetooth. You're allowed to use Bluetooth at the tournament. You can't have Bluetooth or any other remote connections to your robot, um, active during your competition rounds. So here's where the Bluetooth problem is specifically with the spike primes. Um, and again, we touched on it last week and I've read a lot of reviews this week that it happened in past tournaments this week, not in our region. Um, other teams are accidentally um, con connecting to different spike primes and uploading programs or deleting programs from the robot, stuff like that. So um, while we can't really take away your ability to iterate your programming, um, do be very, very careful with Bluetooth. If you guys have the option to bring a cable to do your iterations, please do that. Um, I have yet to find a solution for those of you that program with iPads. I did look today specifically. And um, so there doesn't seem to be the ability to do updates from an iPad to the uh, Spike Prime via Bluetooth. If I'm wrong with that, please let us know so we can share that information. But that's kind of what cable. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they can only be done through Bluetooth is the information I found today. Um, please let us know if that's different. So to kind of mitigate that exposure a little bit, um, what I suggest is if you guys must use Bluetooth, turn your Bluetooth on, you know, only when you have to have it on, do your iterations, turn it back off. Don't leave your Bluetooth on because there's really no way um, for us to police anyone connecting to your robot accidentally and changing coding. And again, we haven't had reports of this happening in Wisconsin region. I'm not saying it hasn't, but I saw no less than six now um, from other regions where they had people connecting and uploading different programs to their prime. I don't know if the spike prime allows it to do this. Or I'm, I know the, um, the EV3 did, we always renamed our, yep. our brick so that it was actually our team number. Um, and at that point it becomes pretty obvious. Someone's not going to connect to a different team number. Whereas if you leave it the default, they all have the same name. Yeah. And I, I really wish there was a secured user, um, created pin, you know, to pair. I really, really wish So this, this happened two years ago, right? So this is where first came up with that literature that Eric sent out, um, that said some places are not allowing Bluetooth connection at all at the tournament at all. So now that most of the teams are using the spike prime and some of them are using iPads, there doesn't seem to be a way to make that connection. They can't do any changes without Bluetooth. So, um, I don't know how other regions are doing it now, but I think Eric and I agree rightfully. So, I mean, they need to be able to iterate, but please limit your exposure to Bluetooth as much as you can. There is no way for us to police Bluetooth. Um, it's, it's no, I mean, the, the teams accept the yeah. The teams are accepting. They have to accept the risk if they do it. Right. Yeah, and like I said on on Slack, I'm not trying to create a panic situation or to give you guys more stuff to worry about, but I am telling you, it is a very real situation. It has happened, and teams are losing all of their programs. So, you know, it's up to you guys to limit that exposure as yeah. much as you can. And you can rename the the spike primes. That is doable. 
but I believe it gets reset on like firmware updates and stuff too. So. Oh. oh, and that's another, so that's a good point. So if anybody watching this video right now, we're attending, turn off your updates right now, turn them off right this very second, stop the video, go turn them off. <laughs> when they do an update, the updates wipe the programming off of your robot. Turn your updates off. Okay, now we can continue. Yeah. Well, with it's, that said, plan when you're going to do them. Right, then. right. So don't never do an update. Yep. But it's, it would be called considered change management and making sure you do it at appropriate times. Yep. Mm -hmm. That you can handle the disruption. And make your backups. So backups of backups. Anything else we saw, Eric? Anything that we had questions the last couple weeks? Not that I can think of. Okay. The game has been pretty straightforward other than yeah. combinations. Okay. Once again, you are not allowed to launch from your iPads, laptops, or other tablets. And I'll throw it out there again. In one of the regions, um, we had no less than five coaches ask us, how come they're not getting points for moving Anna from one side of the board to the other? That is not a mission this year. There is no scoring um, option for it. There is no mission this year for simply transporting something from one side to the other. So if you have that information, that information is not correct. Um, yes, I'm sure. I've looked four times. I promise it's not a mission. And, and Jay, a lot of this information will be covered again, assuming each I, I, I know Franklin has a coaches meeting. Yeah. I would assume Oak Creek has one as well. So yeah. yes, it will. Um, so and the, the, we try to get it out as early as we can um, in case they have these issues. They have time to change them or fix them before they get to the coaches meeting. But yes, we will go over all of this at the, both of the tournaments. Yeah, along with fielding questions. Obviously, any questions that they have, they're more than welcome to ask. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments from the from the gallery, from the guests, coaches? Jerry, Jerry wants to know if I'm I'm sure that there's no. I, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I you know I mean I read the rule book once or twice earlier this year, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't changed. So yeah, pretty sure, but okay. All right. Uh, well then, uh, let me finish with uh, two concluding uh, remarks. Um, obviously, some teams may kind of consider their season over but doesn't have to be of course um there is a robo rumble uh that's going to occur early february it's an oshkosh gosh, but uh it's a wonderful event uh, a lot of alliance teamwork type uh, activities uh we're going to put some of that information in the newsletter so if that's of interest do not disassemble your robot or uh you know keep uh, working up until that time period uh, secondly, and we've said this on a handful of the phone uh, of the Zoom calls, um, it, it, coaches, if you want to get better, one of the best ways to do that is to volunteer to be a judge. Um, a, a lot of our judges are coaches, and that's how they get better, and they know exactly the process. Um, you, you've got some great opportunities coming up, and guess what? We need judges. Um, so we've got a lot of experienced ones and fortunately going forward, we only have one event on each day, so we won't be diluting our necessarily our volunteer, um, pool, but we're always looking for new ones. And I'm telling you, it's the best thing you can do if you want to, uh, you know, advance your team in subsequent seasons. So it's up to you guys. We'd love to have you, uh, wearing the red polos. I'll just it, reinforce it, that I, you know, I judged or I mentored FLL challenge for five, six years. And first couple of years, we didn't do so great, but I really didn't truly didn't understand the rubric as much as you read it and as much as you go through it. Um, it's super different when you're on the other side of the table and you're actually trying to fill it out changes everything about your perspective. And we went on to win two champions awards after that. So it's a game changer to understand the rubric. I echo that exact same story. 
it took me years to um, get talked into volunteering, and once I did, it was boom, totally well, except for the two championships. But you know, <laughs> but we were really close a couple times. But yeah, it was uh, yeah, definitely. I agree. You did Jeff. win a robot award too. That oh I, well, I mean, I could start bringing oh, all yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. See, Josh has even got one. Well, mine are, like, mine, are, mine are way up here, so I can't really like, reach them. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Andy, very impressed that you guys, you guys keep it within arm's reach. <laughs> At all times, all wherever times. I am. All times. <laughs> all right. So if anybody has any questions about anything at this – oh, well, here comes Emily. Hang on one second. Fashionably late. Hello, Emily. Okay, we were just wrapping up with uh, questions or anything. <laughs> Emily, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I think we were just about to head out. Yeah, we lost track of time and totally forgot. <laughs> good. We're working on stuff. Um, no, I'll just watch the replay. Yeah, we were just telling everybody how very important and helpful it is to judge um, and to come volunteer with us. Emily, again, I think has the same story that Jeff and I both have, so... Yes, it's a great experience. I love doing it. And thank you guys. Thank you for uh, judging, was it yesterday? And thank you, your son, for table resetting for us. It was great for all of us. So, yeah. That's actually a really good point because if the parent coach wants to judge, there is a job for the younger participant. Certainly help with setting up tables uh, or, you know, uh, resetting tables, right? Or uh, other things. So, all right. Well, then uh, we'll call it an evening. Thank you, tournament directors, not only for, of course, what you guys do and plan, but uh, also for showing up tonight. Um, good night, everybody, and, and good luck on the tables. Yep. Thank you, Josh. Yep. And in the judging ones. Good luck and have fun. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay.